Thank you so much, Ryan. All right, um, we're gonna move into the Q&A portion. Mishko, would you like to join us uh, also on stage? Um, Ryan, thank you, feel free to take a breather and then uh, grab a seat over here. So um, we had two incredibly insightful and engaging presentations, but they were a little bit longer than we had planned. So uh, we do on time, on schedule, only have five minutes for this Q&A, which is not enough for all of our questions. So what we can do now, we have the break starting five minutes. If you want to participate in Q&A, we'll run it, you know, long. Uh, so you can stay here, participate um, you know, in this discussion, or you can go and grab coffee. It's entirely up to you. We won't judge you. Uh, and these people will, won't feel too sad if, if, if some of you go on coffee. Anyway, should we... Uh, I will feel sad if they don't laugh at my jokes, though. Okay, well, you, you better come up with better jokes then. Um, should we grab seats, or is, is that... Is, is sitting uh, yes, like I would like to sit behind this exchange and pretend yes. I'm uh, making money. Yes, all right. So, so we have tons of questions on Slido. Uh, in fact, because we are a little time limited, we're not going to do the live microphone Q&A on, on this session. So if you do have more questions, please do, please do go to slide.do and use the code FF2023. Um, firstly, I wanted to ask a question, um, which is not from the honest, but it's like, you said, Mishko, that you know you're, an, you know, like you have opinions in, in your talk. You know, you strike me as Don't an opinion, op opinionated <laughs> kind of guy. Um, what are your differences? Of, of opinion. I mean, you, you know, you clearly talk about this stuff a lot. You know, you work in very similar domains, but where is it that you just don't? Uh, first of all, I'm going to tell you, I look up to this guy and I steal his opinions because his opinions are really good. Yeah. So he's my R&D department. He doesn't know it, but. <laughs> yeah, it, it's, it's interesting. I think both projects started at a very different place in terms of motivation. Um, uh, like uh, when, when I started Solid, I didn't even care about server-side rendering, not even remotely. I was just like, how can I handle updates in a reasonable fashion? And it was actually, I was just talking about cost of components, doing signals, doing all this stuff. And then the, the Marco guys from eBay found me, and they're like, this actually solves stuff on the server too, as it turns out. Um, and that was a surprise to me, and it was great, because obviously then I got to continue research in that direction. But uh, you can see that just in the way Solid works, uh, we, we've always been like react, like signals first and primitives and looking at like the, the building blocks and it turns out it's good at solving other problems where I think uh, Quick's uh, inspiration kind of came from a different place. Yeah, the Quick's inspiration is really from the fact that I noticed that the performance of the startup of the application is a problem and the bottom line is if you kind of dig into it and you do all the research and experimentation, you just come to this most obvious conclusion ever, which is like, it's just too much JavaScript. You know, lower the amount of JavaScript and everything is fine. And so my question that I'm trying to answer for myself is like, how do you uh, run an application so that you don't have to have all the JavaScript present all at once? Um, you can get it later. And I don't necessarily mean by lazy loading it later. I mean like you don't have to download all the JavaScript into the virtual machine all at once. You can certainly download it eagerly into the cache. It's just getting it into the virtual machine that's the problem. Yeah, or ever in that case. I think that's yes. one of the coolest things about seeing signals kind of come together. That's what the eBay guys were interested in. And uh, if my, my understanding was right, uh, Quick had a very basic reactivity system uh, at the very beginning and then quickly moved to signals when they realized that you could basically understand exactly what state was in your app and just be able to not just lazy load stuff, but like huge portion of your app could just dis like never make it to the browser because you know that it could never update. Yeah, so the, the realization is basically that if you do all this work with resumability so you don't have to get all the JavaScript in, and then the first time you interact with the application and it like mutates a count or something, and that requires all the code to be present, like you just undid all this hard work of like delay loading everything. And so we needed to figure out kind of the, how to solve the problem of hey, if I update something, I need to be surgical about what I need to rerun. And so over many iterations, we essentially ended up at signals because signals give you this out of the box. All right, well, I mean, I'll let you continue your, your private <laughs> conversation later <laughs> off stage, but let's get some audience questions in. Um, so there's one, one of the most upvoted questions here is uh, that Quick and Solid seems to uh, focus on improving performance. That seems to be the theme of these new sort of like, let's say, post-React frameworks. But you know, you, uh, Ryan, you showed that you know, there's massive DX wins as well. But like, how do you think about this sort of like trade-off between, between you know, UX in terms of performance and then like the DX in terms of enabling, I guess, like creating better user experiences because it's easier to program? 
Okay. Yeah. I mean, it, uh, there's always like a bit of a trade-off, but it, 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 w the thing is, when you get to play with the boundaries a bit, you can kind of change the rules. And I feel like that's the key thing here, right? We had certain assumptions, and what that meant. If you've ever seen uh, my last year's talk, uh, where I turned signals into something that essentially looks like React, um, there's a lot we can do with DX if we have good foundations. So, from my perspective, DX is yeah a big concern. I, I <laughs> the performance. I, I know I can come into a room and convince you on that, but if we can find, use this to, to you know, not just mimic what we've seen in other frameworks or libraries in the past, but to go beyond that, that's what I want to accomplish. So that's why I, I found, if I focus on primitives, um, between myself and the community out there, we'll find good patterns. I think, you know, there's a difference between quick and solid, which is that uh, there's two phases of application execution, right? There is the bringing the application up into running it, so the startup, and then there's what happens once the application runs. And I think Solid has done amazing strides in making sure that once it's up and running, it is amazingly fast. I think the thing that Quick really wants to solve is how do we get it up and running fast, right? So it's a separate kind of concerns. You know, people talk about speed and whatever, but like we have to be clear about what speed we're talking about, and so. The thing that sol uh, the signals really solve is the, you know, once the application is up and running, you know, make sure that it's fast. The thing that Quick really wants to solve is making sure that getting the application into the running state is as quick as possible. Yeah, so we actually have a question kind of related to this, which is like, can Quick eventually get to the point of not needing to download the component ever, you know, doing purely server-side rendering? Um, it's a trade-off between um, the amount of data you serialize and, um, you know, the complexity of the serialization. Um, uh, and so, you know, the, the question for us is like, we could do that, but do we really want to make the serialization uh, stuff more complicated, right? And so, uh, I think as right now, it's just a trade-off that we, sh we think that we should be in this category uh, rather than, um, you know, solid goes all the way in, but that would mean that the serialization uh, that's required from Quick would be much more complicated. Um, and so I think it's a, it's a good enough trade-off for now, right? You know, you have to execute the component at least once on startup, and we're saying we sometimes will execute the component under certain conditions, even, you know, post-startup. And so I think uh, overall, it, you know, it, it's super cool from a uh, theoretical point of view that you don't have to re-execute it ever again. Whether this actually translates into performance uh, at runtime, I think it's less clear. Yeah, I mean, there, there's different ways you can look at approaching, reducing uh, the cost in different places, right? And this is what I was talking about, about earlier, about like different prioritization and different uh, grounding, for example, right? Uh, you, there's other ways not to ship the component code, right? Um, st stuff like islands or, you know, server components. Uh, I say server components in the general sense, not the React sense specifically. Um, so uh, we're definitely, looking at how we can build the primitives to kind of, kind of put that together. There's also a question of, uh, what's the term, uh, amount. Like, if you can serialize the reactive graph on the way up, um, you know, how much cost savings is there being 100% resumable versus, you know, just not redoing any of the uh, computed work on the client. So I, I think this is going to be a really interesting place in the next year or two, we'll, because there's a lot of exploration going on right now into, like, different ways to approach, like I think everyone's really aware now that the initial page load is, is a place that maybe we've been neglecting or at least kind of pushing off to the side as our apps are getting continuously bigger and bigger and bigger. All right, um, I, I'm gonna roll a few questions into one question here. So we, we, we have, you know, like from a pragmatic sort of practitioner's point of view is, is, you know, how do we actually get started, you know, like using these frameworks? And a lot of people, of course, are not building greenfield software. They're migrating from something existing, many of us from React, for example. So, you know, we saw a lot of solid code. It very much looks like React, but of course it behaves very differently. So like there's going to be some interesting migration things. We didn't see a lot of quick code, but we'll see more in the demo session, you know, uh, tomorrow afternoon. But what is the migration story? Are there successful sort of like larger apps that have migrated? What have been learned? And, you know, like what sort of tips would you have for people who are looking into sort of adopting solid and, and quick? So I think uh, quick migration story from React is actually very nice because we have something called Quickify, and Quickify allows you to take a React component and wrap it and make it available inside of the quick application. And in essence, it turns the uh, React component into a lazy hydrated island. 
uh, but it solves the inter-island communication problem as well. So like migrating from React to Quick is actually relatively straightforward, and we spent a lot of time making sure that that's the case. Yeah, it's, it's interesting, because Solid does look similar, but it is not similar. Um, obviously, we, we We've seen a lot of libraries get ported across because a lot of uh, would-be library maintainers see the JSX, they port it, that's like 70%, 80% of the effort, let's say. Maybe not, maybe it's less than that, but that's like the perception coming in and then they update it. We've, we've had a good track record on component libraries coming across either being migrated directly um, or with, uh, you know, uh, kind of like inspired by or even a lot of headless stuff. Um, so. That side has actually been good on our ecosystem. So when I look at React, um, I, I've, we haven't released anything. It's a lot easier when you control the meta framework, like in Quick City, where you're like, this is our framework, and then you can bring React in, and you control the build process. But what, what I've been looking at recently is putting Solid in React. A lot of the asks for migrations recently have been about like, like server components. So it's like, let's replace the root of our application. And I think that with a lot of people on legacy apps, uh, the adoption quite often is incremental. They're like, can I do it a page at a time? Can I do it a section at a time? Um, so I, I've made it so that you can run Solid inside React. But I haven't packaged it up as a thing because you, it will depend on what build tool. So you have to you know, basically make packages for your bundler. But I, I, I've made a runtime library that does that. It even renders the VDOM children inside of uh, Solid components. So you can use context and you can basically like, uh, have them like, all talking to each other. Um, I have to admit, that's not where we've seen a lot of the adoption. Someone came to me at a conference last week and they're like, we've made it work in Next.js. I was like, that's amazing. Um, but I also have to look into it. For the most part, I think the, the story has been the, the, the big lift in the, green, uh, the greenfield uh, migrations. But it is something definitely thinking about. Nice. Um, we have a question here uh, from the from the custom elements crowd. You know, uh, custom elements introduced JS lifecycle to native HTML. Um, what are your thoughts on best practice mixing and matching this with your fantastic frameworks? Um, I have an opinion. <laughs> okay, uh, let me go first then, because you're probably okay, spicier. Go. Solid actually started as a web component framework. Um, I was doing stuff. This is how I landed on get rid of the components. I was like, I have web components for that. So I built a library without components, and then I got rid of the web components. I, well, I guess this is spicy. Um, <laughs> but uh, essentially, um, it was, web, web components have a role. They are good as DOM elements because they are DOM elements, essentially. And we, in the you know, years since 2013, we've realized in a lot of senses components aren't necessarily always DOM elements. Um, our interop story is pretty good. Uh, we have solid element, which lets you author web components because that's, again, where we started. Um, but my you know, personal opinion aside, I'm going to put that over there. Um, you can use web components in solid, and you can author web components with solid. So uh, you can certainly do the same thing with Quick. You can uh, use web components. But I want to point out that web components have a couple of things that don't really fit well with the mental model of Quick. And that is that first Quick wants to uh, do as much work on a server as possible, and web components don't really have a good server-side rendering story, right? So that's the first thing. And the second thing is Quick goes out of its way to make sure it doesn't execute any code eagerly on a client, and web components require hydration. So they require you to eagerly run code on the client. So can you integrate a web component inside of Quick? Absolutely, you know, just looking to integrate it everywhere else. But like you're kind of fighting what you're trying to do, right? On one side, you have Quake, and you're trying to push as much work to the server as possible, and you're trying to delay work on a client, and then you introduce a web component, and that does literally the opposite. Like There is no good SSR story, and you are eagerly executing code on the client. So yes, it works, but like it's not necessarily what you want to do because you're kind of diminishing the value of what you're trying to achieve. I think this naturally leads us to our next question, which I think should be a standard question for any any framework or library uh, talk, which is that you know U.S. authors, of course, you know you're excited about the benefits, but there are of course trade-offs, right? And and so uh, an audience member is uh, asking you to give five drawbacks of using Quick and Solid Edge, but we're not counting. Um, what are you know some of the things that you you think are maybe not today yet or 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 or, or ever going to be optimal about these particular approaches? Oh, see, like, there's a technical question in the non-technical. It's way easier to answer the non-technical, like, number of people, job opportunities, ecosystem, community. But those size. are all extrinsic problems that might be solved over time. 
Yeah, I mean, that, that's the easy one to point out. Uh, so that but, was one. <laughs> or was that four? <laughs> um, uh, it's... <sighs> It's tricky. I, I do think that there is a bit of an ask of a buy-in when we have these primitives, you know, to, to look at. You know, it's, it is conceivably more complicated than, um, like, just having some plain JavaScript. But the problem is nothing that starts as plain JavaScript ends as plain JavaScript. So that's how we ended up with hooks. Like, we always realize, like, we start with this pure model, uh, you know, kind of immediate mode, if you know graphics, where we just, like, re-render everything or do stuff and not care, and then we end up caring. You know, performance matters until, like, doesn't matter until you have to actually care about it. Um, so it's it's tricky. Um, I. I, I spend a lot of time showing that signals can do anything that like a virtual DOM. That, that's that's the whole reason why we, we had a concurrent rendering demo with time slicing where we can do 3GL or mobile or all that stuff. So, oh man, it's I, I do think there's an overhead of initially learning reactivity. I think that is a real cost, um, but it's hard for me to because like everybody's forcing you to learn something these days. Um, I don't know. Do you, you add? But yeah. So I, I separated this thing, uh, this question out to two parts, which is the intrinsic and extrinsic, right? So extrinsic are things that the, has to do with the fact that uh, extrinsically there are less people who know these frameworks. There's less documentation, less books, less of everything, right? And ChatGPT doesn't know about it. Yet, and ChatGPT so. doesn't know about it, right? Yeah, but little those little. are extrinsic in the sense that they're uh, solvable with, with time. They are not intrinsic to the approach of the particular framework, right? And so I want to separate that out. Um, and so when you want to talk about intrinsic properties, um, the bottom line is that uh, as you're using a new framework, you have to learn the rules of that particular framework, right? So with use methods inside of React, there are a set of rules that you have to understand and they have to follow. And that is some cost, that you know, mental cost that you, you have to deal with. But very quickly, you discover that it's a second nature. You don't have to think about it. And so the same exact thing applies to signals, right? So if you use Quick, uh, you have to understand uh, use methods. So you already know that. Then you have to understand uh, signals. Same thing for um, solid. And signals have rules too, and you have to follow those rules. Uh, and again, I am going to say that for somebody who has been doing signals for a while, it's just second nature. You don't even think about it. It's just natural. It's not even like worth discussing, in, in my opinion. But for somebody who's new, uh, there are surprises that they have to understand, right? So you have to definitely learn this. And there's a third part that Quick has that uh, no other framework probably has, is this idea of code extraction. Right? And code extraction is another set of rules that you have to learn and that you have to know. And so there is definitely more uh, rules to learn, but I think what I like about these rules that is that they they're become second nature very quickly. And once you, they become second nature, they solve a whole swath of problems that simply uh, become non-issue inside of Quick or Solid, right? Whereas they are an issue in React. So in React, you have to think about lazy loading or chunking or breaking your application up. And it's, a, it's something that doesn't go away no matter how much time you spend on it, right? The nice thing about code extraction is that once you learn these rules, the problem just goes away. You just don't think about it. It's not part of your mental arithmetic. Right? And the same thing goes with signals and use, use memo, et cetera. So there are things to learn. There are these trade-offs that you do. But I think these trade-offs are totally worth it. Nice. So we're almost at time. We've got to let people get coffee. But one final question for both of you. Um, what, what are you excited about for the future of your, your particular projects or on frameworks? Uh, what's, what's coming up? Uh, what should people be looking out for? Sure, yeah. I, I already talked about a couple things. Uh, I, I think making that migration from existing React apps is really interesting. Um, I've been working a lot with Tanner Lindsley. Um, you know, there's a lot of people who are kind of stuck on create React app, and they're getting pushed into you need a framework world. So um, building tools around that uh, is working hand in hand with Tanner, which is very, very cool. And then the other side is, uh, I didn't demo it today, but we've been working on a solid version of something kind of like some uh, server components. and. Uh, it's it's pretty powerful to see you know that kind of code reduction and uh, you know have a solution that you know fits with us on um, the hydration uh, elimination story as well. Uh, I'm I'm always researching what other frameworks are doing, um, so I'm I'm very excited for the future in general. But those are probably the two biggest things coming up short term for solid. So for me, I have a specific goal to solve, and that is that I would like to be to to enable developers to build. Amazon level personalization without Amazon level resources. And I think that particular thing is extremely difficult today because of how existing frameworks work. 
And one of the things that uh, Quick helps with is the fact that building micro frontends and composing micro frontends is extremely easy in Quick because uh, composing micro frontends essentially becomes a server side include, something that's, that's very cheap. You know, just concatenating a bunch of strings together and you get the output that you want. Um, and so the goal that I have personally for myself, and I think it's a kind of a goal, uh, good direction to kind of head towards, is how do we make personalization easy at scale? Because it is something that we sort of have today, but it's built on lots of kludges and lots of hacks, and it's not really truly personalizable. It's more like we have categories today. And, and to get there is you have to solve the uh, microphone and problem. All right, well, thank you for this fantastic uh, conversation. Uh, I especially like it sitting behind this desk, uh, you know, with these bottles of water. It feels like this in kind of United Nations uh, negotiation of peace between the framework authors. Don't you um, think you just control the world from yes, here? Yes, exactly. We could push the big red button, but there's a glass uh, in front of it. Uh, we did not get to all the questions. Thank you so much for submitting so many questions. Uh, this made this uh, Q&A a lot easier. I didn't have to come up with it myself. Uh, but be, please do grab uh, Ryan and Mishko you know, on the breaks, uh, talk to them. And Mishko will have a session at the end of tomorrow as well with more demo and code. Um, let's grab quick 15 and uh, back in a bit. Thank you. Thank you.